we make the strings. Filler words I just need to say. Red and shiny. Right, guys so we are at the shop today and last night I actually got this thing in primer so kind of letting it sit out in the Sun today this primer only needs about three hours it is the quick um, primer so this is the quick high build primer um, so basically what we use this for is to kind of fill any uh, little extra scratches and stuff in it from the bodywork basically it fills them in and uh, the nice thing about it is that it is actually two parts so it has hardener in it and it actually gets hard versus like rattle can primer where it never ever really gets hard until like three months later. Yeah, so this is really, really good stuff. Uh, letting it kind of bake out in the sun. It's like 90 degrees already. And uh, I mean, you could barely hold your hand. Well, I mean, you really actually can't hold your hand on the car. It's so hot right now. Yeah, so we're gonna let this thing bake out here for probably a couple hours or so just to kind of try to let it completely dry so we don't get really any shrink back in the bodywork or anything like that. I'm in the shop. We did not prime everything at once just because there's so many parts and pieces and I just wanted to get that done so it could sit outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do pretty much the same thing to the, the other body panel. So I have the rear bumper, the rear wing, the rear uh, engine cover, and as you can see, a couple other little pieces like that. These little pieces that go around the engine cover in the back. By the end of this video, something should be in paint, whether it's the engine bay, whether it's the car, whether it's the bumpers, something's gonna be red and shiny by the end of this video. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get through the primer a little bit first. We're gonna do some wet sanding on the car. It's gonna be pretty. guys so got the rear bumper and everything all sanded kind of touching up a couple little things on here this little this basically goes back here on the side by the engine cover and so this thing was kind of bent and tweaked and uh, so I kind of leveled it out kind of tapped it out and then uh, threw a little bit of filler on there to kind of level it uh, get her kind of back straight so yeah I, I think one of the the misconceptions about paint or I don't know I, I feel like there's so many People just think you could like just paint something or like rattle can it or, you know, do something like that. And you could kind of get away with it if you don't want it to look good, like in a year is kind of, or six months or something like that. Kind of the issue, you know, why this thing is kind of turning into so much work is because it was painted previously. And then the, there's just so many little kind of like nicks and stuff on it. I think the car is a 91. So what is that? That's like 28 years. So 28 years old. Uh, Toyota I, I think it's like 200,000 miles something like that so it's been you know it's been used it's been driven uh, obviously it wasn't like a show car or a collector's piece or anything like that it was neglected you know that's why it was like $400 so uh, example of uh, a previous paint job and uh, kind of it being a pain in the butt would be this right here so you can see on all these edges so on the on the face of the panel everything is good you know the paint stuck it's doing all right but then you could see right here there's all these little edges, so like that right there, you know, like there, there's really no other option, like other than to like just sand all that stuff and feather it all out. That's basically the issue that happens when you when you do like a quick respray is that you don't get in all those like nooks and crannies and all the little stuffs because when you're painting, let's say a piece like this, like this one hasn't been, this is still factory, but you put paint up here and that's all right and all this stuff is is and you sand all this and everything's all good and it sticks right there but then you got to think about the edges so you can see right there where it's still shiny anywhere that it's still shiny or hasn't been touched with like a scotch sprite or some sort of sandpaper 
Uh, I say it all the time in, in my previous videos, but paint is a mechanical bond, it's not a chemical bond. So basically it has to have something to kind of sink its teeth into, which happens to be like a sand scratch, with a, like I said, scratch bright sandpaper. So all of these little edges, so basically right here, before I even prime any of this stuff, you kind of need to go in here with like a scotch bright and just kind of, you know, get your fingernail in it and just make sure all the cracks and crevices and all that other type of stuff, you know, is taken care of. And that, that was a big thing that I had to do with this bumper is all of this stuff along the top, all this stuff was kind of flaking paint. Same thing with up here. So kind of feathered all that stuff out as much as I could. Yeah, it's just, it's a really, really long process. You know, not many other like actual automotive YouTubers go through the process of, you know, painting something or taking it down into like this sort of restoration. And you know, most like most places they, you know, when you have a project car or even like you guys at home, like you just take it and like you drop it off at a body shop and then, you know, three months later you, or you know, they tell you a month and then you go back three months later and then you, you can't pick it up because they're still not done. And then eight months later and they're still not done with it. Um, you know, or everything goes good and you pick it up a couple weeks later. But you know, it's basically you drop it off and then all of a sudden it comes back and it's like this nice shiny thing, you know, and, and I've kind of developed the techniques and, you know, figured out and made mistakes in the past to try to prevent issues uh, like this from coming up. So it's just, uh, don't expect to go and, uh, and rattle can a car and have it turn out nice or don't expect to, you know, like not scuff anything or take anything apart and have it turn out really, really nice. I am really excited for how this thing is going to turn out. It's going to be really, really nice. I wish it was mine actually. For now, goal is to get these things in primer tonight and paint something eventually. So more sand in scotch spray. Oh, and then I guess the other thing that takes a little while, it's basically just a little nick. So like just a little nick on the top of the, on the top of this, or like another example would be uh, this mirror right here. So on the top of this mirror, there is, excuse my fingernails, dirty hands, clean money. How about that? But yeah, so see that right there? That is, uh, you know, just another little thing that you kind of have to take care of you know, me that I kind of obsess about and that I just, I, I, I won't let it fly. Kyle is ordering some side skirts uh, that basically cover up this whole rocker panel and go up in here, but I am gonna paint these just for the time being, just because when I when he gets the car back, I want him to look at it and be like, damn, like that's a nice car, not it like still in pieces and stuff. So I wanna get these pieces on it. Uh, but one of the issues that I encountered was uh, previous bodywork that I found right there and uh, kind of the, the more chipped at it, the more kind of came out. And I initially wasn't gonna do anything about it just cause we were gonna do the side skirts. Then the more I looked at it today, uh, I decided to just take another like hour, hour and a half and uh, kind of fix that a little bit and kind of get it. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. You know, so at least the rocker looks a little bit better. So I need to throw a little bit more primer on that tonight. Yeah, sorry about the big ramble. I hope you guys appreciate the information that I do try to put into these videos and kind of like in the comments of the last video, like me explaining the tape line right here and how it was like cracking the clear code and doing some other stuff like that. Like a couple of people like DM, like Sarah Entune to like message me on Instagram and it was like, hey, my MR2 is the same thing and it drives me nuts. You know, same, the, same thing with like two or three other people just saying like, hey, like that happened to my car. Like I had a cheap race spray done and like that's what happens, which makes sense because in order to have that like budget price, a shop can't take a car all the way down and pull the windshield and absolutely all the pieces off of it, it just gets complicated. There's just a lot of things that go into it and I feel like it's hard for me to go back in time as far as like, it just leading to like a lot of work and I, I almost forgot like about paint like for a little while. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing back in, uh, things in primer, quit rambling, let's go. Back at the shop, I had me some good sleep last night. Went and had some breakfast with Jamie and the baby, and the baby was picking out chickens on the wall and saying, one, nine, 10, that's how she counts. They're not, so, they're not seven anymore? No, one, nine, 10, that's, that's yeah. how she counts. So she's actually doing pretty good. But uh, we're gonna get started on uh, sanding the primer. So in order to do that, to actually see what we're, we're dealing with, I put this guide coat on. This is basically a black powder, like dry guide coat. So you just kind of rub it on right here. So if you see me just going over the whole car, well, I'm gonna go over the whole car here in a little bit, but what this is gonna do is 
all the sand scratches and like if there is any little rock chips or anything that I missed, any imperfections, any low spots, I'll be able to see it with this and then basically just keep sanding, be able to block it out. You could already see some uh, pretty aggressive scratches here that we need to get rid of. But uh, yeah, so we'll just So you'll see we got some sand scratches and stuff right here. We kind of have this to where the primer is nice and clean, getting cleaned up, and then there's some a little bit of a low spot right there. Maybe even a little bit right there, we'll kind of see. And it's not a bad thing that we see the scratches because we basically just use the guide coat as a like kind of a measuring tool to just keep sanding. As like a guide. Like a, yeah. <laughs> use the guide coat as a guide to sand out the sand scratches. Yeah, you can see we pretty much got a nice clean little uh, clean primer. There's no black sand scratches and stuff in it. And uh, so I'm not going all the way down with it right now. So since I started with 180, that's pretty aggressive for actually like base coat. Um, but what I'll do is basically go around after this with some 320 with wet sanding and then sand it down a little bit more. So we're basically just kind of knocking off the top, getting it flat with the 180. And then we're gonna go back, wet sand it with All right guys, so got the whole car blocked in 180. That is kind of an aggressive grit to actually block the primer in right before we're doing it, but I am going to be using a 2K, a sealer with hardener in it. So it's like we're putting one thin coat of primer back on it right before we actually spray the base coat. And, uh, and I've had good luck with that in the past, basically even going over 180 just with that. What we're doing uh, is taking it one extra step. We're doing 300 or 320 and 400 grit on the outside of it and uh, basically just wet sanding it, knocking down some of those 180 grit scratches, kind of giving it a nice, nice base for that, uh, that sealer to bite into. So yeah, basically just wet sanding the whole thing. Uh, Brandon is uh, getting ready to paint two doors in the booth. 
So we should be able to uh, roll it over to the booth in about two hours or so. But uh, yeah, I gotta do the fenders, the whole car, um, unmask it, get it all clean, wash all the door jams, feather some edges, do a bunch of stuff like that. I think then we'll be ready to roll it over there and get it ready to paint. So just finished wet sanding the car and finished it out in 400 grit. So now there is the, the issue, there is these little lines. So right here where we masked it, there's this little edge of paint. So basically all we have to do is go on the edge and kind of feather it out like we did right here. So I'm just taking the, the 400 on kind of a softer, smoother block and kind of rolling around that edge a little bit. Uh, right here's not a big deal with, with where we mask it, but here in the door jam, you could see when you open or when you're looking in the door jam, we're basically going to go to that little edge right here. So that's kind of where we're going to put our tape line and we're going to back mask it. So it has like a nice soft edge so that we'll get paint in here to cover that. So when you look in the jam, it's not a different color. Uh, it's going to be slightly, slightly a very similar red, not the exact red, but it's going to be a lot better red. Um, but we're not doing the jams. The jams are in really good condition. They're not like dirty or ugly or anything like that. Just wet sand around and all that type of stuff. Uh, Brandon is all done in the booth and he's basically just kind of waiting on us to bring this thing over there. And I think we're gonna mask it up tonight and either paint it tomorrow morning or we're gonna paint it tonight. So it's- It'll have some color. Something. By the end of this video. Yeah, I mean, but you guys are gonna see it in this video. It's 9.40 PM Saturday. Let's, let's see how far we get. Let's see when we can get our painted. Okay, so it is daytime and we are over at Brandon's booth getting this thing all masked up. And uh, we got the master himself over here. Brandon's masking this. I've never seen anybody do paint bodywork as quick and mask. Like this guy could mask this whole car. How long do you think? 
Oh, you know how we do it, maybe like 45 minutes. I mean, that's that's really freaking quick. So, uh, so yeah, I really don't know what I'd do without Brandon. As you guys seen in the, in the super video and all that type of stuff, he was a, a huge help in getting the body work straight on that and kind of pointing me in the right direction and kind of watching some of the stuff that I was doing and, and questioning it and uh, kind of putting me on the, on the right path. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely nice. He's right next door, so he has this, uh, this paint booth, and uh, it's cool to be able to roll stuff over here, and, uh, and I appreciate him, uh, him letting me do all this stuff. So, uh, gonna continue masking this thing off. We were gonna try to do it last night, but ended up getting a little bit late, and uh, sometimes over here at night, some bugs get in here, and uh, so we decided to just kind of wait and not chance it, and uh, so yeah, now we're just gotta mask it up, and then start shooting some, uh, some sealer and some color.
Alright guys, so as you can see behind me, we have a red and shiny MR2. So this thing turned out really, really nice. I'm stoked with how it turned out. It, uh, all the body work, all the, basically all the body work, all the stuff that we, t that we did actually turned out really straight. And the car looks really, really good. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this thing. I'm happy with how it turned out. Man, there's, there's just like something about like brand new paint that you can't, like you just can't get enough of. And I know like, like this moment right here, like when you put the clear coat on it, is like when, like, that's when you're like, all right, well that, that was worth it. You know, like I'm, I'm glad I took the extra time. I'm glad I did the extra work to like make this thing nice because the end result just shows. So I apologize if you can't hear me that well right now because of the fans on in the booth. Uh, I literally just got to spray this thing about 15, 20 minutes ago. And um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna go back to the shop right now and start working on some other stuff. But I just wanted to close out this video and uh, say thank you guys for watching this thing. Uh, if you guys are stoked about this thing, be sure to leave a like or a uh, thumbs up on this thing and a comment in the in the comment section below. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, I think my subscribe button is finally working. You can give it a, a thing and, and there's a little notification bell too. If you guys want to get updated when I, I uh, do videos. So uh, I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of paint and body stuff uh, for the next couple months. I hope not to at least. Uh, we are going to be hopping back on the R8 basically as soon as we get back from Texas. But uh, yeah, the next video we should be installing, uh, painting some last minute stuff on this thing and then getting it actually all installed and then hopefully take it up to the Booster Boy. So uh, yeah, lots and lots of work go into one of these videos. So I apologize I haven't been as consistent as normal, but uh, hopefully this is uh, was worth the wait. And I know Kyle's gonna be super freaking stoked on this paint job. So 